What up nomads? In this video, I'll show you how I use Trello, a free project management software to plan my trips for leisure, for work, and with or without collaborators. Let's go. Welcome back to the capsule suitcase. If you're new here, my channel is all about travel, packing light, and occasionally other topics like fashion and beauty. Whatever I talk about though, it's always geared towards people who love to travel. Make sure you subscribe and check me out on Instagram for more. Today's video is about using software for planning your travel. I work in tech, which means I've pretty much used every online project management software there is. Asana, Jira, Monday, Basecamp, you name it. The only one I've liked enough to use outside of work has been Trello. I'm a pretty visual person, so I genuinely like its card system that mimics the real life experience of putting post-its on a wall. I also find it very intuitive for anyone using it for the first time. This is particularly useful when adding friends to collaborate with you on Trello. Why use a project management software for travel? Well, there are a few reasons. A, it's a great way to keep all your research and plans in one place accessible from any device. B, it's a great way to share information with multiple people, assign tasks or request feedback on things without having a million group chats. And C, you can share your board with people who later ask for travel recommendations to the destination you're planning for. Let's look at how Trello works. When you log in, you're taken to a dashboard where you view all of your boards. Boards are your playground. They can be themed. For example, you can use Trello to organize all your upcoming Instagram posts, or they can be a catch-all and you can have a board for your to-do list, for example. For travel, I create one board per trip. You can either be a board owner if you've created the board or a collaborator if someone else has invited you to collaborate on their board. Either way, you'll be able to access all the boards you're part of from the dashboard or from the top left corner. If you're creating a new board, you can give it a name and invite your collaborators at the top. Once you're in your board, you can start creating lists and adding cards. Lists are the columns where your cards live and you can have a name at the top of the list. There are typically two ways to treat lists, a theme to group your cards or as a status like planning, in progress and completed. Some people like to have all cards start in one column and then move them as the tasks on the card get completed. For travel, I use lists as a tool to group cards under themes like restaurants, activities, food planning, and resources. You can also move entire lists around if you want to reorganize your board. Now, let's take a closer look at cards. Trello is super flexible. So just like there are a few ways to use lists, there are different ways to view and use cards. Cards can be as big picture or as granular as you need. For example, you could create one card per task or idea, or you could create a more broadly themed card and add a checklist to it for granular items. This is really up to you and your preferences. Cards also have loads of other features beyond checklists. You can create tags for them, assign people to cards so they get notified. You can add a description or comments, attach items, link other cards, and set due dates. You can also watch a card if you want updates when someone adds or changes something to it. Truly, the sky is the limit as to how you want to use cards to organize different elements of your trip. Here are a few more ideas. If your trip requires a pretty rigid schedule, you may want to create a list for each day and each card is an activity. Or you could use Trello with your friends to collaborate on meal planning and grocery lists. You could use Trello to vote on your preferred activities by asking people to add their face to their top choice. You could use it for things like camping to make sure each person knows what equipment they are bringing on the trip. Having three camping stoves is great, but having zero tents is not recommended. Now this may sound like I'm a type A over planner control freak, and I swear I'm not. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. I use Trello and I pre-plan so I don't have to be that person on vacation. I think people have this romantic idea that they will just go with the flow and see what happens on vacation. And while this is true and one of the greatest things about travel, 
What can also happen is you waste opportunities to have a really good time by going in blind. A few examples. Let's say you're looking for restaurants. If I'm visiting a place for a weekend, that's usually five to seven meals. I am so sad when I waste one of those meals on a bad overpriced restaurant. With a bit of research ahead of time, you'd have a card with links to Time Out's best restaurants of each neighborhood at your fingertips. You may never actually use the list, but just in case you can avoid spending 30 minutes head down trying to find a place on your phone or picking an overpriced and underwhelming restaurant. The other example is activities. I'm pretty picky about who I travel with because there's a whole spectrum between people who don't wanna do anything except hang out at the hotel, people who are pretty down for whatever but bring no ideas to the table, and people who pre-purchase all of their activities and have exhausting itineraries. I fall somewhere in the middle where I like having loads of room for whatever may happen and also the flexibility to honor my energy levels and adjust my plans accordingly. On the flip side, I love having a bit of research done in advance so I can lean on it. This means that when I do want to explore, visit a museum or do an activity, I know the museum hours, how to get a ticket, I have a general sense of what attractions happen to be near each other so I can make the most of a metro ride to a different neighborhood, and a few other ideas bookmarked so I don't waste my vacation googling things to do and places to eat. I may eat my words and never actually use my Trello board and discover that what I truly need out of this vacation is to lounge by the pool the entire time. But I'll have my Trello cards handy just in case and I'll be able to reuse that research for a future trip or to share with family and friends who are looking for recommendations. That's it. Those are my recommendations on using Trello to plan your next trip. I'll leave a couple links below for you to save this information for later. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video. Happy travels. Thanks for watching this video until the end. For more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the capsule suitcase and turn on notifications so you get all the fresh content as soon as it comes out. Thanks for supporting this channel. Happy travels.